In this video, we're gonna be looking at the basic operation of a chiller. And this is gonna follow a series of videos on the subject of chillers. Uh, so please remember to check out our other videos and also our website. So firstly, let's look at what a chiller is and what a chiller does. So a chiller is a noisy, large piece of machinery which is used to generate cool water and that's used to provide air conditioning in buildings. You can see on the animation here the, the chiller down in the basement. You can also get chillers up on the roof here as well in a slightly different design. Um, but let's not get too involved in that right now. In this video we're going to be looking at what's happening inside this, this plant item and how it produces the, the chilled water for the air conditioning and also how it rejects the heat as well. So in the chiller the chilled water which is produced in the evaporator um, when it leaves it's leaving you can see here it's leaving at about six degrees Celsius and this centrifugal pump here is then pushing that water around the building where it enters into these AHUs that collect up all the unwanted heat within the building and this heat is then returned back to the chiller and it's returning here about six degrees uh, 12 degrees sorry um, by the time it leaves the chiller again, it will have given up six degrees worth of uh, Celsius of, of heat, so it's leaving at six again. So it leaves at six, comes back at 12, and this cycle repeats and repeats and repeats. Now the heat that leaves this, this circuit here is transferred via a refrigerant over to the condenser. Now these two systems are completely isolated from each other. There is just a refrigerant which tran you know, transfers the heat between these two circuits. So the heat that is picked up in the condenser is then pushed in another circuit up to this, uh, this pump here, the um, centrifugal pump, and that is pushed then up into the cooling tower where the air is forced by a fan inside and that dissipates and rejects the heat from the building. So this water then returns at a cooler temperature. You can see it's being sent up at 32 degrees Celsius and it's coming back at 27 degrees Celsius. So this water returns back to the condenser ready to pick up more heat from, from the, the chilled water system uh, and reject the heat from the building. Now, Chillers come in all shapes and sizes and, uh, uh, and, and re thermal ratings um, and that, that really depends on how much heat the building uh, is, is producing, how much unwanted heat the building is producing. And this unwanted heat comes from sunlight, people, the equipment within the building. Um, even the chiller itself will generate quite a fair bit of, of heat. Um, as it produces this chilled water. So the system will all, all be designed um, to cope with this and to reject that heat and produce enough cooling um, uh, you know, as it was designed to do. And uh, you know, the chilled water system, uh, in this example here, it's a central system, so it's got to a point where uh, having small air conditioning units on each floor uh, is not going to be sufficient to provide the cooling that you need so it becomes economical to install this large large central plant system uh, to produce that chilled water and you may have more than one chiller you, you can you know you usually have n plus one so the amount of chillers you need plus one more um, if you're in a critical environment you may even have plus two or plus three it depends on um, what that building needs but we won't go too much into the detail of that Let's look at what's happening inside this device here. Okay, let's have a look at an illustration of a chiller to help us understand what's happening inside this uh, plant item and, uh, and all of its components. So I advise you to grab a piece of paper and a pen and write this down because you need to know this. There are many designs for a chiller but these are the four main components which will appear in every single one of them. So firstly, let's have a look. We've got 
the evaporator. Then we have the condenser. Then we have the compressor up on the top there. And then down below it, we have the expansion valve. Now, every component of these four components is essential to the operation of a chiller. A chiller cannot work without just one of these, any of them. All of them must be present in a chiller for it to work. Now, there are three main circuits in a chiller which you also need to know about. So write this down as well. We've got the refrigeration circuit, the refrigeration loop. And this is the refrigerant which passes around each of the four components and transfers that heat from the evaporator over to the condenser and back again. In a constant loop, getting the heat out of the building and over to the condenser where it can be sent to the cooling towers. The secondary circuit you need to know about is the chilled water loop. And this is the heat from the building that's being collected, sent to the chiller, and then back to the building. The third and final circuit that you need to know about is the condenser circuit. This is the heat which is being sent to the cooling towers and coming back to pick up more heat. So these are the four components, these are the three circuits. Uh, you might be wondering about what's happening inside here. So the uh, evaporator, the chilled water circuit, is the water, if you, if you remember, that's it's being sent up to the AHU to collect the unwanted heat from the building. And that's returning at about 12 degrees. And it's coming back into the chiller, passes through the loop, and by the time it leaves again, it needs to be around 6 degrees. Obviously, the temperatures can vary a bit. It depends on the setup and design of your chiller. Um, but this is for explanation purposes. So the water that's coming in uh, is within the, held within these tubes, and that keeps the water completely isolated from the refrigerant. The two never mix. The water comes in, passes through the tubes, and then leaves again. It does not leave these tubes. The refrigerant passes through, picks up the heat and it just transfers that heat from through the, the tube walls there. The refrigerant picks that up and then transfers that round to the compressor. The compressor is located up on the top here, usually always above the chiller, and, uh, and that is the driving force of the refrigerant. That is pushing, it's creating static pressure here, and it's pushing that refrigerant around the circuit. That refrigerant enters into the condenser. That picks up, well, sorry, that, that dumps the heat into the, uh, the third circuit there, the condenser circuit. And that is the water which is being returned from the cooling tower up on the roof. And it's entering into the chiller again through these tubes where it's, it's held within the water in there does not leave enters, passes around these tubes, and then leaves again. The refrigerant comes in and condenses along the tube wall. It does not enter into the water, and the water does not leave. It just condenses on there and continues flowing through there, pushed by the static pressure until it hits the expansion valve. The expansion valve is just expanding that refrigerant, giving it a greater ability to pick up heat. Um, when it gets into the evaporator there. So these, these are the four main components and the three main circuits you need to know about. They will appear in every chiller, of all types, sizes and shapes. All right, so let's apply that knowledge we've just acquired to a real scenario. So this is a, a chiller. This is a centrifugal chiller. This is a McQuay uh, chiller, actually. And uh, we're going to have a look around it um, to name the components. And then we're going to come back to this picture here. Um, and maybe a couple of pictures to test yourselves on what each thing is. Now, because uh, going around a chiller is a little bit difficult, so what I've done is created this 3D model here. 
and uh, this will allow us to just go around the cheddar a bit easier um, and without the noise as well. So as you can see we've got the, um, the compressor up on the top here and mounted to the back is a large electrical motor. Now that's the driving force for the compressor and obviously we're going to look at each of these components uh, in much greater detail in, in further videos um, but for now let's just apply each of the four components and try to work our way around the chiller to see where each of these are actually located um, and transfer that knowledge from the illustrations to the actual model. So you should be able to by the end of the video tell me or tell yourselves where each of the four components of a chiller are. So as I was saying there's the compressor up on the top there with the electrical motor mounted on the back there. Now down here we've got the condenser that's this large tube or cylinder here with the inlet and outlet that's where the the water comes in and leaves again and uh, if we turn the chiller around a bit then we'll see here we've got the expansion valve got the expansion valve just uh, located on the bottom there and that's so the refrigerant can leave the condenser and then enter into the evaporator. The evaporator again is another large large cylinder um, very similar design to the condenser um, the pipe, the pipe uh, arrangement, the tube arrangement inside there uh, may be slightly different but again we'll look at that in greater detail in, in further videos and uh, again you can see the uh, the inlets and outlets of where the water will enter and leave and uh, you can see in some of the tubes inside there and uh, the refrigerant inside this then leaves through this tube and enters back into the compressor located up on the top here. Let's just spin it around so you can get another view of it. So that's the condenser, the expansion valve where the refrigerant passes through this and into the evaporator and that then leaves there and then passes back into the compressor. Remember the condenser water enters and leaves in the condenser and the chilled water enters and leaves through the evaporator there. So you should have written down the four main components and the three main circuits within every chiller. So I'd like you to now test yourselves. If we um, bring up this photo here of a real life chiller, the McQuay chiller. And uh, just apply your knowledge here. So take a few moments. Can you tell me what is this cylinder here? Remember it's got a tube, it's coming, being fed by the refrigerant off of the compressor. And it's coming down and entering the condenser. And uh, if we look at the back of this chiller, there's the condenser again there. And you'll see this tube, this pipe coming along from there and entering into this black box. It's covered in insulation. This is all insulation, by the way, because that chilled water costs quite a lot of money to produce. So you want to retain as much um, cool into that water as possible. So uh, that is entering into the expansion valve, which expands the refrigerant and uh, allows the refrigerant, when it enters here, into the the evaporator and that allows it to pick up a bit more heat where it passes through this tube at the back there passes through here enters into the compressor and remember this on the back again is a large in electrical motor which is forcing the the compressor to spin and push that refrigerant all the way around the system and meanwhile the uh, chilled water is entering and leaving here. It's entering at about 12 degrees and it's coming back out at about uh, 6 degrees Celsius. 
you may have noticed um, on this this system here on this design the pipe or the uh, the chilled water is uh, entering and leaving it's entering through one end and leaving through the other end whereas our design has the pipes coming in and out that is fine that is just a different type of design um, we'll go into much more detail about that um, on another tutorial video and uh, as you can see here the the, well, the pipes actually are entering and leaving on the condenser on just on one side there so this is uh, a two-pass system um, but again don't worry about that for this video you should just be able to um, we should be worrying about what these four components are actually you shouldn't be worrying you should know now what these four components are and the three um, systems within them if you d don't know them completely off by heart yet that's fine uh, I'd recommend going back through the video um, just to learn it again and, uh, and kind of uh, get that fixed into your brain because these are essential uh, knowledge if you want to get into the industry for this